Thursday night. Make sure that my speaker is working. My microphone. Got my new little hookup tonight. Praise God. Yes, God takes care of us, definitely. And so tonight is Thursday night. Yes. And um, I wanted to do the announcements and then I'm going to start. Um, the announcements are that if you have or if you would like, um, I have a, uh, we have a new believers material. And um, if you like that, you can um, contact us at Renew Life Ministry at gmail.com or you can contact us through the website at renewlifeministry.com and um, we'll get that to you and there's uh, um, a lot of little different things in there with the um, new believers material and then if you would just like some information from us you can even um, contact us and then also we're going to be doing the Bible study on March 16th at 7 p.m. and this is going to be the um, the uh, handbook that we'll be using and uh, with the Bible. And so it starts at uh, Genesis. And so um, that's going to be about five dollars. And you can go into the website at RenewLifeMinistry.com and you can sign up um, to let us know that you will be attending and we'll get that book out to you. And um, that's a, pretty much it for tonight for the um, announcements. And so um, tonight I'm going to be reading out of Acts. I'm going to be reading out of Acts. Thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, I ask you, Father God, that you, Lord God, bless me, Lord God, to bring this word in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So I'm going to be reading out of Acts tonight. And I'm going to be reading about the, the lame man, the man that was lame. He was crippled for ever since he was from birth. He was crippled. And, um, and I'm reading from Acts Chapter three, verse one. And it says, if you have your Bibles with you, uh, you can read along with me. And I'm going to be reading out the, out of the living, the living Bible tonight. Usually I read out of my um, new King James, but tonight I'm reading out my living Bible. And Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon to, to take part in the three o'clock daily prayer meeting. As they approached the temple, they saw a man lame from birth carried along the street and laid aside the temple gate and one called the beautiful gate as was his custom every day. As Peter and John were passing by, he asked them for some money. They looked at him intensely, intensely. And then Peter said, look here. The lame man looked at them eagerly expecting a gift. But Peter said, we don't have any money for you, but I'll give you something else. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Then Peter took the lame man by the hand and pulled him to his feet. And as he did, the man's feet and ankle bones were healed and strengthened so that he came up with a leap, stood there a moment and began walking. Then walking, leaping and praising God, he went into the temple with them. Now, if that wasn't an act of faith, if that was not an act of faith, he, it said that he said, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth to walk. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth to walk. He could have, I'm going to say this. When Peter took the lame man by the hand, when he took him by the hand, and pulled him up to his feet. Peter could have thought and said, you know, he could have thought and said, well, I don't know if this man's going to cooperate if I grab him by his hand. Because if you notice, he said, I don't, we don't have any money, but what I do have, he said, what I, and I read his exact words, what he said. He said, but I, he said, we don't have any money for you, but I'll give you something else. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth to walk. And then Peter took the lame man's hand by the hand and pulled him to his feet. The man could have resisted and said, I don't want to be bothered. Leave me alone. You know, whatever he hadn't walked since he was a 
since he was born. So he could have. But if you notice, it said it said that. And as he did, did the man's feet and ankle bones were healed and strengthened so that he came up. So he came right on up when his ankle bones and everything. So it's basically the power of God that made his ankle bones and his his ankle bones and uh, and feet bones and ankle bones were healed and strengthened. So that he came up with a leap. So he came, when he came up, he was like, boom. You know, he jumped to his feet and was leaping around. And then he stood there and then he began to walk because he was like, wow. You know, he leaped up and then he stood there and then he started walking. Faith. He started walking. I'm getting ahead. I'm, get, I'm getting there. Then Peter took the lame man by the hand and pulled him up to his feet. And as he did, the man's feet and ankle bones were healed and strengthened so that he came up with a leap, stood there for a moment and began walking, the walking and leaping and praising God. He went into the temple with them. The heavenly father worked through Peter. He pulled him to his feet. So he he was working that the Holy Spirit was working through Peter because he pulled him to his feet. So it was some action behind it. And instantly he was healed. He took him by his hand. There was required an action. The action was that he pulled him, that the action was he pulled him by his hand and he pulled him to his feet. He grabbed a hold of his hand and pulled him to his feet. We walk by faith and not by sight. That was an act of faith. It was truly an act of faith. Anytime he seen a man and told him, we don't have no money, but what we do have, I command you to walk in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And then he grabbed him by his hand. That was an act. So not only did he say, I command you, he said, I command you to walk. And then after he said, I command you, that's when he grabbed him by the hand and pulled him. And then his, his ankle bones and his feet began to strengthen and they began to, and he began to, he, he, he got up, came up with a leap. And then he began to walk. Peter's Peter Peter's obedience spoke into the spiritual realm, and then the healing showed up in the natural realm. His feet and everything else was healed, and he stood up and he was he was he stood there, and then he walked, and then he leaped. Well, he leaped when he got up, and then he started walking, and then he started praising God. He the faith of belief, and then the man. Also, he, it took for, cause he could have said, leave me alone. Don't grab me. You know, I want some money, you know, cause he did ask for money. He could have said, I just want some money. I don't want to be grabbed. I don't want to, you know what I'm saying? He could have said a whole lot of things, but he, he, allowed, he, he, he got after he seen that he could get up and walk. This man hadn't walked his whole life. He totally forgot all about the money. He didn't even care about the money no more. It was all about his, his feet had been healed and his ankle bones. And everything else. And he started leaping, walking, leaping and praising God. So he didn't care nothing about that. It's it is impossible to please God without faith. If we don't have faith is is impossible. Can you imagine just asking for something? And then when it don't show up, your faith is gone. You don't believe if something don't show up, it doesn't happen. Peter demonstrated faith. And that man went to walking and leaping and praising God. So Peter demonstrated faith. He was, he was, he wasn't, he didn't question anything. He just did what God told him to do. He reached out to do the healing process and he was healed in the name of Jesus. We must show what Jesus has done through us, our healing, our deliverance, our restoration, our lives, our gifts. Through ministry, when God gives us gifts through ministry, we must show people those gifts. We must show people our healing. A lot of times we get healed and we don't want to show nobody. We don't want to tell nobody. We're, we're like, oh, I got my healing. Well, I, I got mine. That's all that matters. You know, we don't want to show what God has done for us. You know, we, we a lot of times keep it to ourselves. You know, we get delivered from something. You know, we want to keep it to ourselves. We get restored. You know, we don't we don't want to tell nobody that. You know, our gifts to our ministry is not just for us, but they're to share to the world. 
They're to go out to the nation and to share with the world. Peter, Peter had the gift of healing. It's obvious he had the gift of healing. God was able to work through him. And Peter didn't even hesitate about the, heal, about, about the healing. He said, I'll give you something else. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth to walk. He went, he did, he was obedient. We must allow ourselves to be humble, to allow God to use us. A lot of times we want to question God. You know, we want to, we want to question God. Where is the healing? You know, where is, you know, why isn't it happening? Why isn't my bills being paid? Why haven't I seen my fam my, my family, my unsaved loved ones saved? You know, we pray. And then after that, we just run around and we say, you know, if I don't see it, then it's obviously not, must not be going to happen. I don't see it happening. So it couldn't be getting ready to happen. It couldn't be taking place because I don't see it. A lot of times if we, we quick to, we're quick to say, if we don't see it, we give up. We give up. We throw the towel in. God, you didn't heal them. You know, uh, did nothing happen. I asked you to pay my bills. The bills didn't get paid. You know, I, 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 you know, I asked my, 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 uh, unsaved loved ones. I asked you to heal, to, to save them. You said that you would save them through your promises. I don't see them saved. And then all of a sudden we just give up. We give up after we don't see them saved. They start acting some type of way. So all of a sudden we just say, well, I don't see it. But the thing is, is that with God, it's about faith. You have in, in order to please God, you have to have faith. You have to have faith. Because when you don't see it, that doesn't mean he's not working on it. He's working on it behind the scene. So when we, when we ask for something, it goes into the spiritual realm. And then it manifests itself in the natural realm. We begin to see it. But we must have faith to understand that God is working on it. We must trust him. We must believe like Peter did. Peter said to the man, he said, I don't have any money, but what I do have, I command you in the name of the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth to walk. And he didn't hesitate and think to himself, this man might not walk. This man might stumble. God ain't going to heal him. You know, he didn't say none of that. He just said, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth to walk. And then the man leaped because his ankle bones and his feet began to strengthen. God started immediately. It was a supernatural healing right then and there. How? And then the man received it. He got up with a leap, stood there and walked. Well, he stood there for a minute, then walked and began to praise God. We must learn to trust God in all situations, no matter what it might look like. It may look like it's all falling apart. It may look like it's not working out for us. It may look like all hell's breaking loose, but we have to, sometime it's time we get pressure put on us. I'm here to tell you that sometimes that's happened to me a lot of times where all of a sudden I'll pray for something and then all of a sudden it seemed like the, the walls come tumbling down or, the, or, the, or, or and not in a good way, but the walls come, come tumbling down. I mean, there's times where the walls come down because they need to come down because they, uh, that means that, you know, I've, we're overcomers. But I'm talking about all uh, hell breaking loose after you prayed and asked God, you know, to fix something or do something and then all of a sudden... It, you know, it gets worse, but he's trying to test you to see if that faith is you going to hold on to that faith. Are you going to believe after you see something? I had something happen today. It was where I was working in my office on the computer and it, this would not work. It would not work for me whatsoever. And I just tried and I tried and I tried. You know what? I, I, I pushed the chair back and I said, Jesus, take the wheel. And immediately when I said that, I kid you not. I did it. It seemed like the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, you know, try again. And instantly it worked. But it was like when I kept trying to put my my spin on it and I kept trying to do it and kept trying to work it. You know, it was like I was getting frustrated. God don't want us going into the frustration and all that stuff and telling ourselves in our head it's not working. It must not meant to be, you know, this and that, and this and that. When I pushed chair back and I said, God, take the wheel. It was and I and I allowed him to. Those, but those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. 
They shall walk and not faint. It's definitely the truth. And the joy of the Lord is your strength. I keep repeating that so much and it helps me. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Because when I get frustrated and I get to the point where I don't see something arriving and I say, I know God that you, that your promises are real. I know Lord God that you, Lord God, are the, or, or is trying to give me the things that I need for whatever it is that I'm needing. And I know that Lord God, you are my provider and I need, don't need to lean on my own understanding. I know that he's going to show up for me. So that faith, that faith has to operate. If that faith doesn't operate, it's a problem. Because if you don't see it arriving, you're going to start getting worried. And God tells us clearly not to worry. You're going to start, you're going to start getting scared. You're going to start getting nervous. You're going to start, you're going to start doubting God. You're going to start doing some, some of everything. The enemy's going to come in and say, I told you he's, he's, he, he's mad at you or he's this or he's that. You got to have faith in order to please God. And so a lot of times that's what happens where we don't have that faith and, and we just lose doubt and everything else. And so he uh, when the people. OK, so reading on then he, he was walking and leaping and praising God and he went into the temple with with them. If you have just tuned in, I'm reading from Acts ver uh, chapter three. And I'm reading from verse nine right now. So when the people inside saw him walking and heard him praising God, they realized and realized he was a lame beggar. They had seen so often in a beautiful gate. They were ex expressively surprised. They were surprised to see this man walk because this man hadn't walked his whole life. He had never walked his whole life. He, since he came out of his mother's in, in the, in the new King James, it says since he, he came from birth, he had never walked. They all rushed out to Solomon's hall where he was holding tightly to Peter and John. Everyone stood their awes by the wonderful things that had happened. Peter saw this opportunity and addressed the crowd. So the people were excited to see this. They knew that he didn't walk. And here's the thing is that's why it's important when we get healed when we get, when we get delivered, when we get set free, when something, when God is blessing us and he's blessing us every day, if you woke up this morning, it's a blessing. You know, you don't have to get all these things to say it's a God blessed me. God's blessing you right now. And if you got breath in your body, God's blessing you. And it's important for us to tell those because there's a lot of people who need to hear that. They need to hear that God is blessing you. They need to hear that. They need to have that hope. Maybe they don't know about God. I don't know. Maybe something's bad is happening in their life. Maybe they're down on their luck. Maybe something's going on. And it's important for us to encourage people, especially those of the believers. It's important for us to encourage them and tell them what God is still doing. This is not outdated. God is still healing. God is still working miracles. God is still delivering. God is still the redeemer. God is still everything we ever need and more. And so it's important for us to tell a lot of times, like I said, that a lot of times we want to keep things to ourselves. We don't want to tell anyone what God has done. I know for me, I will, but I'm saying like, and I'm not saying, you know, I've always done that, but most of the time it's like, we have to tell people what God, you get excited. You want to tell people it's, it's, you know, it's just like, it, it, and it, and it boosts other people's faith. It's just like, you know, you just, it, it, it just, it's something about that, something about the name of Jesus. That's what I just thought about, but it's something about it when you share that with someone and you tell them how good God has been to you and you tell them the things that God has done for you and he's done for your family and you tell them, you know what I'm saying? It's just, it's something, it's something about the name of Jesus, something about that name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And so they went into the, they went, they, they, ru they all rushed out of the solemn hall where they were holding tightly to Peter and John. Everyone stood in awe by the wonderful things that had happened. Now these people was, you talking about the people that had crucified Jesus. They, they, they didn't. And see, Peter saw an opportunity to address the crowd. Men of Israel, he said, what is, what is so surprising about this? And why look at us as though we are our own power? and godliness had made this man walk for it is the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and all our ancestors who has brought glory to this servant, Jesus, by, by doing this, I refer to Jesus whom you rejected before Pilate, despite Pilate's determination to release him. You didn't want him freed this holy righteous one. Instead, you demanded the release of murderers and killed the author of life, 
but God brought him back to life again. And John and I witnessed of this fact. For after you killed him, we saw him arrive. We saw him alive. Jesus name has healed this man. And you know how lame he was before. Faith in Jesus name, faith given us from God has caused this perfect healing. Dear brothers, I realize what you did to Jesus was done in ignorance. And I and the same can be said to to your leaders. But God has fulfilled the prophecies that the Messiah must suffer for all these things. Now change your minds and attitudes to God and turn to him so he can cleanse away your sins and send you wonderful times of refreshing from the presence of God and send Jesus, your Messiah, back to you again. For, for he must remain in heaven until the final recovery of all things from sin as prophesied from the ancient time. Moses, for instance said long ago and the Lord God will rise up a prophet among you who will resemble him. Listen carefully to everything he tells you. Anyone who will not listen to him shall utterly be destroyed, shall utterly destroyed. Okay. And Samuel and every prophet since have all spoken about what is going on today. So he was telling them that basically he was telling them that, you know that Jesus did this, but you didn't believe it. What's so surprising about it? Why do you think that we did it? They thought, they thought the crowd thought that Peter and John did it. Why are you in Oz when you know who did this? They had seen Jesus do healings, but they sat there like they couldn't believe it still. And this is important. That's why I say it's important to continue to tell people what Jesus has done for you. What Jesus, that Jesus is continuing to heal, that Jesus is continuing to deliver. He is continuing to set people free, that he is continually bringing people off of addictions and things and whatever else that people may be going through. He's continuing to bless people up out of the miry clay. He's muttery club. He's continuing to bless people. And it's important for us to, to share that news, that good news, that Jesus is still on the throne and that he's still that he's still blessing those. It's important. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Father God. In the name of Jesus, thank you. They didn't believe it. They didn't understand it. They thought that it was them that had did it. They thought that it was Peter and them that had did this. Peter and John. And they didn't know. They, did, they, they, they knew, but they didn't want to know. They didn't, they didn't want to acknowledge it that it was. They did not want to acknowledge that it was. First, it got their attention. The people inside. After all, they seen a lame man walk for the first time. They were shocked, basically. Then Peter saw this opportunity to tell them, why are you so surprised with this? And why are you looking at us like we did it? The reason why? Because they were blind. They were spiritually blind and spiritually dead. Remember, they had rejected Jesus. They didn't even believe Jesus then. So why should they believe him now? After all, he died for their sins. Now, why would they believe him now? Remember, they put him on the cross and Peter goes on to say. So Peter says, even though you did all this stuff to Jesus, even though you were ignorant to what you did to Jesus and they were it was blind to the truth. He goes on to say God was fulfilling the prophecies, but now change your minds and your attitude and come to Christ. Come to Jesus. Come to the heavenly father. Yes, you wasn't listening and you was blind, but now you can, now you can see. So they seen again that Jesus had did this, but they still didn't want to believe it. They could live in the truth. They could be set free. They could come to Jesus. Peter tells them, change your attitude to God and turn to him so he can cleanse you of your sins. We must make sure that we are showing Jesus to others. So that they will want him. We must make sure that we are showing them Jesus. And so that they would want to would want to accept him. We must acknowledge and tell people that Jesus is still doing great things every day, every hour, every minute, every second. There's somebody right now that God is saving somebody's life. He's protecting us from harm. He's watching over our houses, our children, our families. He's doing mighty and great things for us always. It's not just sometime. He's doing it all the time. 
and we must believe and we must, we must begin to show. We must have faith. We must trust in Jesus that he's going to do those things. We may not see it done right now, but he's working at it. He's working behind the scene. In this, in this story, we see faith working. We see faith. And then we also see where people were able to see Jesus do something, do things, make a man walk, a lame man walk that hadn't walked at all. He was, he was crippled. He couldn't even walk since birth. And Jesus healed him. We've seen this in this story. And we also seen that people changing, they needed to change because they were spiritually blind. They did not, they thought that Peter and John had did it, or they thought it was some kind of trick or something or some kind of, you know, they didn't, you know, oh, they didn't know what to believe, but they didn't believe in Jesus. But it's because Peter set the record straight and told them, how do you think that we're the ones who did this when you know who did this? You've seen who did this. Why would you think we did? And now they were all surprised, but it's important that we show people about Jesus, that we tell people about Jesus. Yes, Jesus went to the cross for this reason, that they may, their sins may be forgiven because they were, they were in their sins. They were, they were ignorant. They put him on the cross. They crucified him. So that they, he went on the cross that they may be forgiven. So I say this to say, even though we were ignorant and not listening, and I once was that way before I gave my life to the Lord and lost, we can still be saved right now. Jesus loves you still, and he is still blessing us. Jesus healed a lame man, and he can heal you too today. Do you want Jesus today? Do you want Jesus? God is asking us to turn to him. He understands that you have sinned and may have fallen away from him. You can return today. Maybe you have backslide, but you can front slide. You can come back to Jesus today. Maybe you walked away from Jesus. Maybe you said, I, I just, back in the days I tried it and it didn't work for me. And now I, 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 I think that I want to try it again. I didn't got older and I'm, I'm afraid that one day I might leave and I might not know where my soul is going. You can do it today. Maybe you used to be saved. Maybe you walked away. Maybe you did whatever. Maybe you just go to church out of obligation. He is asking you to turn to him. Still giving you time to repent. The pandemic has got people on the edge of their seats. All walks of life, especially the ones who feel obligated to prove to the world that they have it all together. A lot of times we feel like we, we, we go on our own what we feel. We feel safe. We feel comfor comfortable. We feel like every, we got everything all figured out. We feel as though everything is going to work out. We feel as though nothing is going to happen. There's no problem. They're going to send me the stimulus check and I'm going to be fine. But a stimulus check can't get us to heaven. A stimulus check, even if you took the stimulus check and handed it to somebody else, you have to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. In order, you have to repent of your sins and be baptized into the remission of your, you have to, you have to accept Christ into your heart. You have to accept Christ into your heart in order to make it to heaven, in order to go to heaven. The fear of losing it all. A lot of times people in the pandemic, they have the fear of losing all. Spending more time thinking about losing everything, the peace of keeping it and the enjoyment of having it. Even losing sleep, worn out inside, trying to hold it together in front of everybody. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. So if you have come away from God, maybe you have fallen away. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Matthew chapter 10, verse 19. Put Jesus first. Find your life. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. So maybe you haven't accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. Maybe you haven't. The words of Peter moved them deeply. And they said to him and others and apostle, apostles, what should we do? And Peter replied, each, of, each one of you must turn from sins, return to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the, for, for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you also shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And not all who 
sound religious are really godly people. They may refer to me as, as Lord, but they still won't get to heaven for the decision. Decide, decisive question is whether they obey my father in heaven at the judgment. Many will tell me, Lord, Lord, we told others about you and used your name to cast out demons and to do many other great miracles. But I will reply, you have never been mine. Go away for your deeds are evil. Come to Jesus today. Come to Jesus right now. Because a lot of people think that I'm giving away cookies. I'm doing some good things. I'm, 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 I'm doing good things on earth. I'm doing this and I'm doing that. And that's not going to get them into heaven. God is saying right now to come to him. In this, in this, in, in this story that, that I read with Peter and John healing with God working through them, they healed the lame man that could not walk. If we see demonstration of faith, we see demonstration of healing. We see a demonstration of able to tell people about Jesus. We see of them saying that they were ignorant and that they needed to come to, they needed to come to God. Now that, that God is coming back. We've seen all this in this story and God and this story is not outdated. It is right now. God has said is I am. That means right now. God is a I am. He wasn't, he was, or he is, he's I am. So God is right now in the name of Jesus. And so if you would like to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, repeat this prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I know I'm a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe Jesus Christ is your son and I believe that he died for my sins and, you, and that you raised him from the dead. I want to trust him as my Lord and Savior and follow him as Lord of my life from this day forward. Guide my life and help me to do your will. I pray this in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Jesus. If you said if you repeated that prayer, you just accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. You have just accepted. That's the best decision you could have ever made. The best decision you could have ever made. You will not be disappointed. Trust me. Oh, Lord, you will never will you be disappointed or ne never will you be disappointed. Never. Thank you, Father God. In the name of Jesus, you will never be disappointed. That's the best decision you can ever make. A lot of times people spend their time worrying about their retirement. They spend their time worrying about how life's going to end at the end. You know, if they're, you know, who's going to who's going to miss me? Who's going to be at my funeral? Who's going to be this? Who's going to be that? But they never, never think about where their soul is going to go. When, when life is over, when they leave this shell, where is their soul going? And if you just, just prayed that prayer, you just accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. And that's the best decision you, best decision you could have ever made. Get into a Bible believing church. And, and I, I invite you that you can definitely be a, be a, a, be in this church, Renew Life Ministry Church. You could definitely be a member of this church. I want to get some, some new believers material in your hand. I want you to contact me at renewlifeministry at gmail.com. Or you can go to the website at renew, that's E, that's R E, renew life ministry.com. Renew life ministry.com or renew life ministry at gmail.com. I want to get that new believers material in your hand. Or if you just want some material and you know to read and it's a lot of good information, you could do that too. And just contact me. And welcome to the family. God bless you. Your name is written in the book of life. You are now, you are now going to heaven. You, you will, you, your name is written in the book of life. And if you die today, I'm going to be honest with you for sure, you're going to heaven because you've accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. But in order to know that there is a God, you got to have faith. To believe that there is a God, you got to have faith. So it, it, you got you to gotta serve God with faith, faith. And, and, and to, be, to read the word is what helps your faith to get stronger. That's what helps your faith to get more and more stronger and be a doer of the word. Not just a hearer, but a doer of the word. Thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. So I'm going to pray and then I'm going to close. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, Father God, for your word. I thank you, Father God, for those that have tuned in. I thank you, Father God, for giving me this word. Lord God, for speaking this, Lord God, through me. Lord God, for giving me the boldness, Father God. And also, Lord God, I pray for those, Father God, that are watching. 
I pray for those, Lord God, in their homes, going to their homes, Father God. Bless their families, bless their children, their unsaved loved ones, Father God. May they, Lord God, give their life to you. Father God, I ask you, Father God, to help them, Lord God, in situations that we that I don't know, but Lord God, you know. I thank you, Father God, for that. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for blessing them. Father God, I ask you, Lord God, to bless them with the things that they need. Father God, I ask you, Lord God, to give them, Lord God, the wisdom. Lord God, that they begin to seek you, Lord God. That they begin to seek you, Lord God, on a daily. Father God, I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for everything and the fellowship. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, I'll be back on Sunday at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. God bless you. Uh, make sure that you follow my page because I also do uh, motivational speeches when, you know, motivational word. When God gives me the word, I do that. Really, it's more prophetic word. But when God gives me that, I do that too as well. So God bless you. Have a blessed night and take care. Be blessed.